Imagine a small generator standing on its frame, cut off from the soil beneath it. You pull a wire from the live slot of its outlet and drive the other end deep into the earth. Nothing else is connected. The machine starts, it hums, and yet nothing happens. No spark, no current rushing into the ground. Why not? The answer is stranger than you might think. Ground is not what it seems, and the truth reshapes how we see electricity itself. This is where the mystery begins, and once you see it, you'll never look at power the same way again. The Illusion of Ground When we talk about electricity, we imagine wires carrying neat streams of current, always forming a closed loop. But that picture is only part of the truth. A circuit is really just a way to describe how charges move in response to differences in potential. The ground beneath us isn't automatically part of that picture. Think about a battery. If you press one terminal into the soil, nothing dramatic occurs. The soil does not suck charge away because there's no return path for it. Yet when a power line falls to the earth, sparks leap and arcs form. The difference lies not in the earth itself, but in the way the system is tied together. Lightning offers another contrast. A massive imbalance of charges builds between clouds and the earth until the air itself breaks down, creating a sudden path. Millions of amps flow in an instant. But your little generator, wired to a lonely ground rod, has no such imbalance. There is energy stored in its coils, but without a complete path, that energy stays trapped, humming quietly inside its own loop. Ground as a reference point. In many small devices, the word ground doesn't mean the dirt under our feet. It simply marks a shared reference point for measuring voltages. On a circuit board inside a toy or a radio, one trace is labeled ground, even though it has no connection to the earth at all. It is only chosen as zero volts to make calculations easier. Voltage is always about comparison. You cannot speak of a single point having voltage on its own. It must be compared to something else. By convention, we call one spot zero, then measure everything else relative to it. That is why two identical circuits can both claim ground, even if one sits on your desk and the other floats on a satellite. For low voltage electronics, whether the circuit touches the actual earth hardly matters. The difference in potential between a few volts on a chip and the enormous size of the planet is insignificant. But as voltages rise and systems connect across long distances, the choice of reference becomes critical. That is where the earth begins to play a much more active role. The grid and its hidden balance. Now imagine stepping up from a small toy to the vast machinery of the power grid. At the heart of it all sits the generator. Inside, magnets spin past heavy coils of wire, pushing currents into conductors that feed entire cities. Most systems produce three separate streams, called phases, which together form the backbone of transmission. If you look up at high voltage lines, you often see three thick cables running side by side. Those are the phases. Each carries current that rises and falls in rhythm, offset from the others so the load stays balanced. What you do not see is a fourth cable running to the ground. The link between these phases and the Earth is weaker than you might expect. That link comes from something called capacitive coupling. Even when not connected, any conductor sitting near the ground develops a faint relationship with it, like two plates of a capacitor. This invisible bond keeps the phase voltages hovering in balance with respect to Earth. But it is fragile. Under normal operation, it holds steady enough. When a disturbance comes, like a fallen branch brushing a line, that delicate balance is pushed aside, and the true role of grounding begins to show itself. Faults in an ungrounded world. 
Picture what happens when one of those three phases touches the Earth in a system without a firm ground connection. Maybe a line breaks loose in the wind and rests against wet soil, or a conductor brushes against the steel of a tower. At that instant, one phase is tied directly to the ground. Surprisingly, the system doesn't collapse. Motors keep spinning, lights stay on, and the other two phases continue supplying power. That's because the loads are connected between phases, not between a phase and the Earth. To them, little has changed. This is one advantage of leaving a system ungrounded. It can ride through a single fault without shutting down. But the picture has a darker side. With one phase pinned to ground, the other two are forced upward in potential. Their voltage to Earth nearly doubles. That might not bother the equipment immediately, but it demands heavier insulation, taller towers, and greater clearances. Costs grow and risks mount. So while an ungrounded system might look resilient, it hides danger. The imbalance pushes stress into every cable, every transformer, every insulator. It buys time during a fault, but at the price of higher strain, waiting quietly in the background. Why current needs a path? Protective devices cannot act without the movement of current. Every fuse, every breaker, every relay looks for a surge that signals trouble. If no extra current flows, the problem can remain hidden. That is why grounding becomes more than a formality. It creates a path that allows faults to reveal themselves. Think of a simple toaster. Under normal use, electricity runs from the hot conductor through the heating element and back along neutral. The loop is complete. But if a wire inside comes loose and touches the metal shell, the case itself can become energized. Without a safe outlet, it just sits there, waiting for someone's hand. Touch it, and you become the missing return path. The solution is a deliberate bond, a grounding wire tied to the case and back to the neutral. When the fault occurs, current rushes down this low resistance path instead of through you. The surge is large enough to trip the breaker. The same principle scales up to the grid. Substations and towers connect to the earth so that when a fault strikes, a river of current can flow. Relays sense it instantly and cut the line. Without that deliberate connection, danger can remain invisible. The Earth as a Conductor To see what kind of conductor the Earth really is, imagine pressing two copper rods into a box of dry sand and wiring them through a bulb. Flip the switch and nothing glows. The sand resists the flow too strongly. Even when water is poured in, only the faintest current creeps through. Soil does not behave like copper. Its ability to carry a charge depends on minerals, moisture, and temperature. Add a little salt to the water, and suddenly the bulb glimmers, because the ions give the current a way forward. That is why grounding systems vary so much from place to place. Clay, rock, and sand each respond differently. When current leaks into the soil, it does not travel as a single stream. Instead, it spreads outward in every direction, forming shells of decreasing potential. Close to the rod, the drop is steep. But farther out, it levels until the current vanishes into the vastness of the earth. This spreading nature makes soil a poor wire, yet its size gives it power. It is both resistance and infinity at once. Potentials that harm. When current spreads through the ground, the voltage at each point is not the same. A single step across the soil can place your feet at two different potentials. Your body, far more conductive than rock or sand, can become the bridge. Current rises through one leg and exits the other. This is called a step potential. 
and it has taken lives in an instant. There is also touch potential. Imagine placing a hand on a metal frame that has fault current flowing into the ground. Your feet stand on soil at one voltage, while your hand rests on steel at another. The difference drives current across your chest. To protect workers and the public, engineers design grounding systems with care. Substations bury grids of wire to lower resistance and spread current evenly. Surfaces are covered with crushed rock to insulate boots from the soil. These measures cannot remove the risk completely, but they reduce the deadly differences to a level humans can withstand. When Earth becomes the wire. In some parts of the world, the Earth is not just protection, it is the circuit itself. Rural distribution systems called single wire Earth return use only one overhead conductor. The current leaves on that single line and flows back through the soil and rock. It saves money where distances are vast, though it also spreads risk. The same principle appears in high-voltage direct current lines. Under normal operation, two poles carry the current, but if one fails, grounding systems can take over. Electrodes buried in rings of earth or sunk into the ocean close the loop across an entire continent. But using the planet as a conductor is never clean. Stray currents can eat away at buried pipelines, disturb telecommunication lines, and, in seawater, create toxic chemical reactions. Even fish, guided by magnetic senses, can be disoriented. The Earth accepts the burden, but not without cost. Then there are the forces we cannot choose, like lightning. It is not a circuit with a tidy return path, but a violent correction between sky and ground. And beneath us, slow telluric currents move constantly, driven by storms on the sun and the shifting field of the planet. Our grounding systems exist in this restless environment, shaping the path of power through forces far larger than us. Return now to the lonely generator and its wire buried in soil. No current moves, because a loop is missing. The Earth does not swallow electricity on its own. It only carries what is sent through it, always returning to a source. Ground is not magic. It is another path, vast and imperfect, yet tied to the machines we build. We ground our systems not to feed the planet, but to protect ourselves. In faults, in storms, in hidden flows beneath our feet, the Earth becomes part of the circuit. It is the quiet partner in every spark we use.